So yes guys, here we are, I'm pretty sure you already heard the news, Alexei Navalny is dead. This is a video that I never really thought I was gonna have to film, and it's certainly a video that I never really wanted to film ever in my life. But it is indeed real, because it's just been confirmed that Alexei Navalny, one of the main and the most prominent opposition politicians in Russia, and also the most famous critic of Vladimir Putin and his government, has been confirmed to have died in prison on 16th of February of 2024. And guys, look, we all know what's going on here. The only reason why I would ever use terminology such as died in prison is just because I'm a Russian citizen at the end of the day and I really do not want to be in big trouble. In big trouble. Yes, exactly. But otherwise, guys, I'm pretty sure we already know who did this and why this happens. But the most interesting thing is, is that it's not even been one day yet since Navalny has died and Russian propaganda is already blaming his death on the West. Washington and Brussels are responsible for the death of Navalny. What is happening right now is just an absolute circus, so in today's video I decided to talk about Navalny's death, and overall I just want to talk about Navalny's legacy as a Russian politician who was trying to fight for freedom, and also I want to talk about what kind of personal impact Navalny had on me. Because if it wasn't for Navalny, a lot of us young Russians today wouldn't even be conscious enough to realize the reality of the Russian government, because Navalny was a person who truly opened a lot of Russians' eyes. And his life and work has been pretty much nothing but heroic. Alexei Navalny started his career as a journalist and a blogger, talking about various cases of corruption in Russia, which later became the thing he was most known for. Navalny has published multiple huge documentaries detailing the corruption of huge Russian officials, even including Vladimir Putin. In 2021, Navalny released this massive movie about Putin's palace, this huge mansion that Putin built for himself that was worth billions and billions. Navalny has been criticizing the government and organizing massive anti-Putin demonstrations all over Russia, and then later in 2020, Navalny survived an assassination attempt when he was poisoned with a highly secret Novichok agent while traveling Russia, and essentially he barely made it alive. He was in a coma and had to be rehabilitated in a Berlin clinic Charité, where essentially he had to learn how to walk again. And after being rehabilitated, Navalny announced that he's gonna be coming back to Russia, and right after coming back to Moscow, he was arrested and then sentenced to two years in prison on a bogus charge of missing his parole. And a year later, Russia sentenced him to 9 more years in prison, and a year later again, to 19 more years in prison. Navalny served his time at a high-security prison for only the toughest prisoners in Russia, in very harsh conditions, and then was actually sent to a prison located in the very north of Russia, not far from Vorkuta. And actually, just two days before his death, Navalny was filmed during the court hearing at the penal colony in which he was imprisoned. And what can I say, he certainly does not look like a person who was about to die in this particular video. This is the thing that a lot of people don't know about Navalny, but actually, he was essentially being tortured in prison. The prison would send Navalny to Shizo, the so-called disciplinary isolation, which is essentially a six square meter room in which the bed is stuck to the wall during waking hours. So essentially, all you can do in this room is either stand or sit all day in solitary confinement. And usually these disciplinary wards are known to have terrible conditions, terrible heating, terrible medicine, terrible food, etc, etc. And in his three years of imprisonment, Navalny actually spent over 300 days locked in within this disciplinary ward, which is torture. There's no other way to describe this. It's pretty obvious that they were trying to destroy his health. Because that's what Russian prisons do. And yes, even though Navalny looked fine two days before his death, his time in prison was spent in very, very terrible conditions that would destroy anybody's health. So, the initial news about Navalny's death actually came from the Federal Penitentiary Service of Russia, and they have not said what the reason is. So far, the only media in Russia that has voiced the possible cause of Navalny's death was actually Russia Today, which said that their sources claim that Navalny essentially died because of a blood clot. And, uh, that's it. 
But once again, guys, I don't really trust Russia today, so... <laughs> and right after this information came out about Navalny passing away, a ton of Russians around many different cities of Russia have started coming out and actually bringing flowers, and they actually started bringing these flowers to the monuments dedicated to political prisoners in Russia. Yes, those still exist. These are usually monuments that were made in the 90s or something. And of course, guys, as you might expect, the mighty Russian police was right there, ready to arrest people that decided to, uh, you know, show their gratitude or appreciation to Alexei Navalny by bringing him flowers, because of course, in Russia now, you can't even not just, you know, protest or, you know, voice your opinion or anything. You cannot even bring flowers to honor a dead man. You can't, because in Russia, apparently, you're only publicly allowed to mourn, you know, the heroes of the special operation or whatever. And yes, guys, you know, just look at this, videos of Russian cops arresting people trying to lay flowers and, you know, trying to voice their opinion about how, you know, killing political dissidents is bad. Yes, guys, truly the most free country in the world. You know how Tucker Carlson was recently in Russia praising it and shit? Yes, Tucker, please, I wanna hear more, please. God, I fucking hate everything about this. And now, guys, obviously, like I said, the talking heads of Russian propaganda have somehow already found a way to blame Navalny's death on the West. For example, let's check out the take of Vyacheslav Volodin, the chairman of the Russian state Duma, which is the Russian parliament. Washington and Brussels are responsible for the death of Navalny. The cause of the death will be determined by medical experts and the investigation. However, when we have a situation when, without even getting any results, the politicians and the heads of unfriendly countries are already trying to blame us, first of all, we have to answer the question, who exactly will benefit from the death of Navalny today? So yes, it's the European Union and America that killed a uh, Russian prisoner in a high-security Russian prison located in the Russian, like, Siberian North. <laughs> yes, yes, it was Joe Biden who did it. Crazy, I know. How'd they keep getting away with this? The propaganda pundit Anton Krasovsky, who is also famous for uh, having that one video in which he said that we need to drown Ukrainian kids, yeah. He said this, The first thing I could think of is Americans killed them in order to try to make Russia look worse after the interview of Tucker Carlson and Putin. But it is truly very scary to imagine that they can perform a special operation on a territory of a high security facility in Russia just like this. Yeah, dude, I know, it's fucking terrifying. It is really scary that these foreign agents and Western spies can somehow enter this high-security facility in Russia and kill Navalny to make Russia look bad. It's ridiculous how far America will go these days, you guys. <laughs> and the press secretary of the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Maria Zakharova, said this. The fact that the leaders of NATO countries have reacted to the death of Navalny in such a quick way immediately by directly blaming Russia is basically just exposing themselves. We haven't even had a medical examination yet, however, the West is already ready with all the uh, conclusions. So yes, the narrative of Russian propaganda is basically, Navalny was killed by the West in order to make Russia look bad and also to make Putin look bad right after he looked so good in the Tucker-Putin interview. Because, you know, that interview obviously changed everybody's minds in the West. Everybody loves Putin now. Not. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> So they had to kill Navalny in order to make Russia look bad again. Because Russia's winning so hard right now in the public opinion. That is fucking insane. That is fucking insane. But also, don't they understand that like, why are you even making this conspiracy about Americans like killing a person on the territory of a Russian prison? So are you just admitting that you have like no security in your country and anybody can infiltrate and do whatever? I mean, what the fuck? Oh my god, it's a circus. Navalny died in Russia in prison. And I know the propaganda also claims, but wait, why would we kill Navalny, you know? It's not beneficial for us, it doesn't make Russia look good. Yeah, invading Ukraine didn't make Russia look good either. And everybody also said that Russia wouldn't do it because it would be too much of a blow to Russia's image and reputation, right? But they fucking did it anywhere because they don't give a fuck! They don't give a fuck! They stopped giving a fuck a very long time ago, bro. They don't give a shit about anything. One thing I also forgot to mention is that Navalny has suspiciously only died after Vladimir Putin gave his interview to Tucker Carlson. Was that science? Is this a crazy coincidence? Or, you know, was this done so that Tucker Carlson couldn't ask any, you know, uncomfortable questions regarding Navalny in this? I don't know, guys. I sound like a conspiracy brain right now, but when it comes to, you know, Russia, nothing's off the table. So yes, guys, uh... Forgive me, forgive me for getting a little mad because this, these news yesterday, they fucking shocked me to the core. Because now I want to talk about Navalny as I see him. 
Here's the thing, Navalny was not a perfect person, he said a lot of derogatory things, he had a nationalist past, a lot of people in Ukraine don't like Navalny because he had a very strange position regarding Crimea, because apparently he wasn't trying to scare off Russian voters or whatever, in Georgia for example people don't like Navalny because Navalny actually said derogatory things about Georgia and sort of supported Russia's aggression towards Georgia in 2008, Navalny has had pages in his biography that are not the greatest, however just from my perspective he's done a lot of good. At least for the past 8-7 years, Navalny really has been the face of Russian opposition, of Russian resistance to the government of Vladimir Putin. He felt like a leader to a lot of people, he organized a huge movement of opposition behind him and his videos, his documentaries in which he was exposing different Russian corrupt politicians and showing off their you know, wealth and how they're embezzling the money of Russia, these videos opened up a lot of people's eyes on the corruption in Russia and the overall situation in Russia, these videos made a lot of people who were blind before realize what is actually going on, and even though you could say Navalny didn't manage to sway the majority of Russians, especially because Russia was trying to his hardest with his propaganda to destroy Navalny, to show him off as like a traitor and a sellout to the West and these endless propaganda documentaries that were shown about him, exposing him on the TV and so on. Nevertheless, Navalny has mobilized a lot of Russian people to lead an active resistance against the government and he's inspired a ton of Russian people who basically didn't care about politics before to actually start caring. And this is precisely the reason why Navalny led some of the hugest and biggest demonstrations and protests that were thrown in Russia in the recent years. He had real political power and a lot of supporters. Then in 2018, Navalny tried to run for president in Russia in the 2018 election. He had a huge campaign going also, he was opening campaign offices all around Russia, there was even one in my city, you know, it felt huge. But then obviously Navalny was not allowed to run by the Central Election Committee of Russia, which I guess was rather expected, but I still remember myself in 2017, I remember watching the live stream of Navalny going in there into the Central Russian Election Committee and trying to apply for presidency and I was like, no way this is happening, like this is real. Like finally some changes happen in this godforsaken country, you know what I'm saying? And he gave a lot of people, millions of people around Russia hope. Navalny and his movements and his supporters, they all sort of gave, you know, Russians who feel like me, Russians who think like me, they gave us a refuge in a sense, right? Because when you live in Russia, you're constantly surrounded by this militarist propaganda, where if you dare to ask your government questions or criticize them, you're called a traitor. You live in this insane gaslighting society of fucking Vatniks. And you feel like you're basically completely alone. You feel like you're the only person around that doesn't support Putin that wasn't a sort of suck his fucking dick! I'm sorry guys, I'm, uh, I'm a little mad, I'm a little mad, but when you visited Navalny's rallies, when you were at those rallies, when you went into his videos, you looked at the comments, you felt like you have people in this country who actually think like you, and who also understand that what is happening is fucking ridiculous, and Navalny and the entire movement he created, his community, everything, it gave so many millions of us hope, and it gave the millions of us the feeling that we're not alone. And he was a big influence on me personally as well, I personally started watching his videos like around 2015, 2016, so I was pretty really young, relatively still, and he influenced me a lot man, I probably would not be making these videos today if Navalny was not a thing, because he, for a lot of reasons, was the person who actually, you know, sort of made me woke about Russia and what is going on in Russia, right? And he did that for millions and millions of Russians, and young Russians especially. They used to even joke back in the day that only like, you know, teenagers and little kids actually support Navalny. So yes, in a weird sense guys, it kind of feels like I lost a fucking family member, and I know that sounds fucking ridiculous, but it really does. It really feels like I lost a family member. This is unbelievably, unbelievably fucking sad. The man was just a breath of fresh air, he was the first politician in modern Russia to actually talk like a real fucking person. To act like a normal fucking person. And he has such a beautiful family, he has two children and a beautiful wife. And now they have to lose their father because of this? I'm so sick dude, I'm fucking so, so sick. I really wanted to sit down to try to record this video and not get overly emotional, but I can't. This is... They don't care anymore. They really don't give a fuck anymore. That's what's happening, right? Because that's the main question we might have. Why did Russia do this? The reason is because they don't care. They want to scare people off. They want to show you that nothing is off the table at this point, right? And the Russian election is coming up and, you know, there was this whole fuss with, you know, these anti-war candidates popping up and people supporting them and everything. I think the government realized that the Russian people and especially the opposition in Russia maybe perhaps is feeling a little bit too free, so they decided that this would be a great 
you know, show of force and a show of power, you know, essentially showing that we don't care, yes, we will do anything at this point to, you know, keep our power, to destroy your life, we will do anything, we don't give a fuck. And here's the thing guys, you know, America currently is denouncing Russia, saying that Russia is, you know, Putin is responsible for this and everything, saying that America is going to retaliate and, you know, make Russia pay or whatever. But the truth is that I feel like they will get away with this, guys. <laughs> like the West can do nothing at this point. What can they do? Russia is already sanctioned to shit, right? And still, it's doing fine, I guess. They have endless fucking oil and gas they're sitting on. They'll be fine. I genuinely do not see what can be done about this, so like... Yes, they will get away with this. As always. And this is not the first person who's died mysteriously either. As a result of being a little bit too outspoken. You know what I'm saying? And look guys, it's just so fitting that I was actually about to record another video on this channel called Essentially There's No Hope Anymore. That things are about to get a lot worse because apart from Navalny dying, another not great news coming out from Russia recently is that uh, Boris Nadezhdin, you remember that guy? You know, the uh, anti-war Russian presidential candidate that started popping up recently and who uh, actually got pretty popular and a lot of people were, you know, queuing to sort of lift signatures for him and stuff like that. Guess what, guys? The Central Election Committee of Russia did not allow him to register as a uh, candidate for the election. So, uh... Yes, there will be no independent anti-war candidates at this election in Russia. They did not allow anybody with a different opinion to run. Which is not surprising because they never did. So yeah, guys, I don't even know what to say. Navalny is dead. Nadezhdin has been refused. Trump is probably about to win the elections in America. I mean, Biden is basically like, you know... He's not here all the way fully, you know, and I'm not even saying that Trump is all the way here, he's definitely not, he's just as fucking insane, but people will vote for Trump just out of spite. <laughs> so yeah, Trump is gonna probably win, he's gonna cut funding for Ukraine, it feels like the West is really not supporting Ukraine as much as they could, Trump's about to fucking win, Putin's about to win the next election, and the entirety of the world is basically heading into fucking fascism, like, you know, in Europe, Italy, Netherlands, insane right-wingers just won elections there, and you know, fucking, there's like a huge right-wing resurgence in Germany and everything now, I mean, guys, it's bad. It's bad, guys, we, we, we're going into dark times. If you guys thought the past two years were dark, no, it's gonna get so much worse. It's gonna get so much worse. With Trump and Putin in office? Come on, guys. The world is gonna be fucking fun. It's fucking over, guys. It's over. It's over for everybody. It's over for me. It's over for you. It's over for all of us. And also have no hope for the world anymore. And guys, even though I want to get really sad and end this video on like a depressed note, I would actually like to end it on something different. And that is a quote by Alexei Navalny himself from uh, the documentary movie Navalny that actually came out not that long ago about his poisoning, which won an Oscar. By the way, I suggest you guys watch it because if you haven't yet, oh my god, it's an amazing watch, amazing story. But yes, essentially Alexei Navalny, when he was filming this documentary, the director asked him to leave a message to his viewers in in case he dies and uh Alexei Navalny said that even if he dies we should not lose hope and uh today I guess I want to do what Alexei says and I want you guys to pay attention to his words also and uh I guess that's how we're gonna end this video rest in peace to Alexei my condolences to his family my condolences to everybody who's feeling hurt regarding this right now. Navalny was a man of strong convictions and a man of huge integrity, insane bravery. And I can only hope that we ever have a leader in Russia that would be as courageous, as straightforward, as real and as down to earth and also human as him. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will leave you with Alexei's quotes. <laughs> Не надо, нельзя сдаваться. Если это произошло, это означает, что мы необыкновенно сильны в этот момент, раз они решили меня убить. Но и нужно использовать эту силу. Не сдаваться. Помнить о том, что мы огромная сила, которая находится под гнетом вот этих вот чуваков плохих, лишь потому что ну, мы не можем осознать, насколько действительно мы сильны. Все, что нужно для торжества зла, это бездействие добрых людей. Поэтому бездействовать не надо.